Creating an app may pose challenges, but it doesn't have to be overwhelming. And in this video, I'll guide you through the full process from beginning to end. Hey, I'm Mike Monroe, founder of Obelisk. We specialize in building web and mobile applications for mid-market businesses, and I've worked on over 50 apps. This video shows you the full process that you should follow. There's five steps that I'll walk you through. So let's get started. Step one, define your concept. You have an idea. Now what? Think about the market you are serving. Who is your ideal customer? Do some research. Talk to potential customers. This is very important. Don't skip this step, although a lot do. Talk to as many potential customers as you can and get as much data as you can. Make sure you understand their pain points and how your app might help solve those problems. You might have some ideas in mind for features that they think may not be valuable to them. They might also have some ideas for features that you never thought of. This is gold. Make sure you talk to customers early on. You can also start to give pricing feedback. If the product came to market with the features that they're asking for, how much might they pay? Is it $19 a month or $99 a month? Is it yearly pricing they're looking for? If it was freemium, what features might be important enough for them to pay extra for? See if you can get some information on how they purchase software and products today. See if you can figure out where they might be spending time online to keep up with their industry. This would be key to help with marketing initiatives. Also, you can see if you can learn by providing an early adopter discount. It's a good time to start thinking about your unique value proposition. What will make your app stand out from your competitors? Document the features of your app. You've started, you've gotten some feedback from customers. Now you're gonna start trying to figure out what will actually go into the app. Write them down. Start with one page that lists high level concepts. Then build out those concepts more in depth. You don't have to go crazy. Just make sure you have a roadmap that aligns with satisfying the needs of the customers that you spoke with. Start to organize those features into smaller chunks of work to be designed and built out. A good project management tool helps here. Something as simple as Trello can work, but some other common options include ClickUp, Monday.com, Asana, and Jira. Although I think we see a lot more of enterprise level companies using Jira these days. Typically during this phase, you may come along some ideas that don't really fit in the early goals of the product you're trying to build. That's okay. List those things out, but don't get distracted by them. You can always revisit those ideas for adding to the product down the line. Try to keep the scope of the product to the key features that you know will offer the most value so that you can get to market as soon as you can. Okay, so we have some information. We're starting to get work on the app. Some ideas are flowing. You can start marketing. Start marketing now, start marketing early. Continue marketing throughout the life of the product as you're trying to get it to market. Talk about it online, share your journey as it's being built and keep those potential customers engaged in what's coming to market. Step two, design. Start on paper, mocking up crude drawings of how features of your app might fit together. Whiteboards, large notepads, and good markers can help a lot here. There'll be a lot of brainstorming, Really get into creative mode. Start iteration. It's easy to make changes here, so don't skip ahead to anything high fidelity just yet. Feel out how things flow. How will different user workflows impact each other? It's very easy to start moving pieces around when you're just working on paper. Keep iterating, keep getting feedback internally. If you have some customers who are really excited and wanna help with this process, get some feedback from them as well. Then you can start moving on to polished mockups. Maybe you start introducing a tool such as Figma. As you layer on detail in your designs, reach back out to customers that you spoke with and ask for more feedback. What works? What doesn't? Those are all great data points for you. But be careful in getting sidetracked by building anything too specific that might only fit the needs of one customer. You want to over-deliver to a market of customers, so don't build something just for one. As you start getting more detailed designs following iteration, you can start moving on to development. Although your design process has a great start at this point, you're not done. Design and development should work together to make tweaks as the app evolves. Step three, lay the foundation of your app. Make sure your development team is set up for success. Our framework of choice is Ruby on Rails. These days with Hotwire, you can build dynamic apps without needing a separate JavaScript front end framework, such as React or Angular. Full Stack Rails is a game changer. We've worked on multiple projects where team size was cut by more than 40% moving from a single page 
application in front of an API to full stack Rails. It's really exciting to see where Rails has come to. We'll start off by getting a basic Rails app up and running, then checked into GitHub. We're big fans of utilizing Tailwind for building out the front end. So Tailwind is configured at this point as well. This is very easy to set up using one command as part of the initial Rails installation of your application. Start documenting configuration notes in your project readme file. Your team can add to this document as the project evolves. Before you start building out too many of the core features for your app that will deliver value to your customers, you'll need certain things that most apps just require, such as logging, user tracking, start with something very simple, authentication and authorization, and then some basic UI layouts based off of the designs that you were working on earlier. You can start to think about how your database might be structured to support some of the features that you'll be building. This is also a good time to set up a staging environment in continuous deployment. As your features are built, you want those to get into staging. Continuous deployment is something you can rely on after you go to market as well. When features are ready, you can push them right on into production, continuously adding more value for your clients. Our stack of choice is Heroku and a Postgres database running on Crunchy Data as our database provider. We used to use AWS, but AWS can actually be very overcomplicated for a lot of smaller teams. If you have a dedicated DevOps team, maybe AWS is a good choice for you. But in a lot of instances, we really think Heroku with Postgres running on a Crunchy Data is really the optimal choice. We will introduce AWS for some document storage on S3, and then potentially sometimes we'll utilize CloudFront as the CDN as well. For DNS purposes, we typically utilize Cloudflare. As features get built out, as mentioned earlier with continuous deployment, they'll continuously move into a staging environment for product stakeholders to see changes as the product progresses. The Rails framework makes most of these straightforward. Convention over configuration provides paths out of the box that we can follow. Step four, develop and test. Find a milestone cadence that works for your team. Smaller sets of features that can be stacked together. A lot of teams utilize two-week sprints. I think that's a bit too short to meaningfully tackle groups of features. 37 Signals follows the shape up process that utilizes six-week blocks to tackle a feature theme. Find out what cadence works best for your team. During the development phase is where the superpower of Rails comes in. You're building your UI and your backend structure all in Rails. Your team is not blocked. A lot of teams that still use UI frameworks such as React in front of a Rails API leads to developers getting blocked all the time. Either the React developers are waiting on the API developers or vice versa. Who's managing state? Where is it being stored? It's an endless loop that never seems to end. This is just not a problem with full stack Rails. Your team immediately focuses their efforts on building features for your customers and less time spinning wheels or being blocked. If you're building a mobile app, Start getting early builds into the iOS App Store or the Google Play Store. Both stores support test versions that can be used internally before the products are ready to be shipped to your users. Remember, we talked about marketing earlier. You should be continuing to market your app. Share some screenshots. Share some behind-the-scenes peek of the process that you're utilizing to build your app. Maybe talk to some of your developers or the designers. See if they can share some thoughts on how things are moving along. Everything helps. Keep your customers engaged with what you're bringing to market. Stay in touch with them. You spoke with them earlier to see if you could get some insights of where they might be keeping up with the industry online. So that's where you want to hit them, whether it's LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, wherever they're usually finding themselves online, that's where you want to continue to market them. Email as well is always a go-to. Testing. As your app has been getting built out and deployed to staging, you want to be doing ongoing testing. Your development team should be writing automated tests that stress functionality as it's built, and that can be used to find regression bugs as features are added. Some bugs will be found as you continue to use the app as features are built out. Document those bugs and prioritize those accordingly in your project management software. Step five, deployment and go to market. Your core list of features are complete and you're ready to launch. If you follow the steps above, launch shouldn't be too much of a burden. You've continuously tested and used the product as features were built, 
you should have confidence built up that the app is ready for your users. On the mobile side, you've continued to test against internal builds for testing purposes, and you're probably ready for submitting for approval. The review process is a little different between the App Store and Google Play. On the mobile side, you've done some testing against your apps and you wanna get them ready for the approval process. We typically set both App Store and Google Play releases to be held after reviews have been approved. That gives us more control when apps are made available in the app stores for download. You've continued to share your journey with customers and your marketing team has led efforts to funnel in potential customers you haven't spoken to yet or haven't marketed to. This is a good time to hold a launch event. Strive to get customers signed up before the product launches. Continue sales and marketing to get new customers aboard while keeping your current customers happy. Introduce new features that provide more value and continue talking to customers you have and potential new customers. Never stop listening to their needs. Play with pricing as the product evolves. That might mean price adjustments or different offerings based on price. At a minimum, once a year, you should be looking at your pricing and see if some tweaks are needed and continue to evolve the product. Today, we've covered five steps for shipping an app. Let's summarize those steps. Defining your concept, design, laying the foundation for your app, development and testing, deployment and go to market. If your business currently is doing more than $10 million a year and you need web and mobile application development, are stuck getting a new product idea off the ground, or just need some help, use the link in the description down below to book a call. I'd love to see how we can help.